My sister convinced my friends to betray me, claiming I was just in the way of our family's true purpose, but I, it's strange looking back, realizing that my sister Riley was plotting behind my back for so long, maybe even before I noticed her ambition veering into something darker. We weren't best friends, but she was family, you know? Older by two years, Riley was always the confident, ambitious one. I, on the other hand, was more laid back, more into living life than proving anything. She had a vision for herself, and apparently, that vision didn't include me. My friends, Jackson and Ava, were the steady rocks in my life. Jackson and I had known each other since freshman year of college, and Ava joined our little circle the following year. Then Mason came along last year, kind of on the fringe of the group, but fitting in well enough. Things were pretty solid, and I thought we'd all be close for years to come. But Riley, well, she had other plans. It started subtly, the kind of stuff you'd brush off if you weren't looking for it. Riley would make little comments like, Liam, what are you even going to do with your life? Or it's time you stopped floating around and got serious. I thought she was just being an overbearing older sister. But then, there was this one night that really set things in motion. I came home late from work, and as I walked past the kitchen, I heard Riley talking in hushed tones. Curious, I paused, hearing Jackson's voice too. He was agreeing with her about something, but the words were muffled. Just as I was about to step forward, Riley's voice cut through clear as day. Liam's just in the way. He's always been in the way. We have to start thinking about what's best for the family's future. For a moment, I couldn't breathe. I leaned against the wall, hoping I misheard, but her words echoed in my mind. What did she mean by in the way? And why was Jackson, my best friend, nodding along like he agreed? My stomach twisted. I wanted to storm in and confront them, but something stopped me. Maybe it was the chill that ran down my spine, a feeling that this was bigger than just sibling rivalry. I didn't say a word, but that night, I lay awake, replaying Riley's words, trying to convince myself it was nothing. I started paying closer attention, but it was subtle at first. Jackson and Ava would cancel plans last minute. Or when we did hang out, they'd act distant, like their minds were elsewhere. Mason, too, seemed to be getting more involved with Riley and Jackson, leaving me on the sidelines. I chalked it up to coincidence, maybe even paranoia, but it wasn't long before the coincidences piled up. One weekend, Riley invited us all over for a casual dinner, something she rarely did. I thought maybe it was her way of bringing everyone closer, so I showed up, trying to ignore my nerves. The whole evening, Riley acted like the perfect hostess, and Jackson and Ava acted. Strange. Every time I spoke, they'd exchange glances, or Riley would steer the conversation back to whatever she was talking about, shutting me out completely. I felt like an outsider among my own friends and family. The dinner wrapped up, and I found myself walking home alone, wondering what I'd done to make them act so off. Jackson and Ava used to talk about everything with me, every stupid thing we were dealing with. Now it felt like there was some unspoken alliance, and I wasn't in on the joke. The real breaking point came a few days later, when I ran into Mason at a coffee shop. I decided to ask him outright if something was going on. He looked at me like I'd grown a second head. Liam, you're overthinking things, he said, though his voice sounded a bit too defensive. Riley just has big plans for the family. She's ambitious. So what? I shook my head. She said I was in the way. You don't think that's weird? Mason just shrugged. She wants what's best for everyone. Don't you trust your own sister? I tried to. I really did. But when I looked into his eyes, there was something I couldn't place. A flicker of doubt that made me feel like an intruder in my own life. After that conversation with Mason, my anxiety started eating at me. I tried to shake it off tell myself that it was just Riley being Riley, bossy, competitive, always needing to be at the top. But things just kept getting worse. My friends were slipping through my fingers, and every time I tried to grasp onto them, they just pulled further away. I couldn't stop thinking about that night in the kitchen, Riley's words echoing in my mind. Asterisk he's always been in the way. Asterisk I didn't understand what she meant by that but it felt like a knife twisting in my gut every time I replayed it. I kept trying to tell myself that maybe I was overreacting, that it was all in my head, but my instincts wouldn't let it go. One Friday, I decided to confront Jackson directly, 
He was my best friend. After all, if anyone was going to be straight with me, it would be him. I texted him, asking if he wanted to grab a drink, and to my surprise, he agreed. I showed up at the bar a little early, feeling more anxious than I cared to admit. When he arrived, Jackson seemed different. His usual easygoing demeanor was replaced by something guarded. He kept glancing around like he was nervous, and he wouldn't meet my eyes. So, what's going on, man? I asked, trying to sound casual. He shrugged, sipping his beer, avoiding my gaze. Not much. Just busy with work, you know? I pushed further. Jackson, I know something's up. You've been acting weird lately, and so has Ava. I feel like there's this thing happening, and I'm not part of it. Just be real with me. He finally looked at me, his eyes hard. Look, Liam, maybe Riley has a point. She's got her head on straight, and she's trying to do something big. You're just drifting. She thinks you're not serious enough, and honestly, sometimes I see what she means. I sat there, stunned. What are you even talking about? Serious enough about what? Jackson sighed, clearly frustrated. This isn't just some family drama, okay? Riley's trying to build something, and she needs people who are focused, who have a direction. She doesn't think you have one, and it's making things complicated. His words hit like a punch to the gut. Jackson, the guy I'd known since college, was telling me I didn't measure up to my own sister's standards. I wanted to yell, to shake him, to demand answers, but all I could do was sit there, frozen. I managed to stammer out, so, that's it? I'm just, in the way? Jackson avoided my eyes again, taking another sip of his beer. Maybe it's not like that, but maybe it's time you figured out what you want, Liam. Riley's got big plans, and if you can't be part of them, then... He trailed off, and the message was painfully clear. If I couldn't be part of her vision, I wasn't part of anything. The night ended awkwardly. I left without another word, feeling hollow and more alone than I ever had. My best friend had just told me I was an outsider in my own life. The next few days passed in a blur of confusion and anger. I could feel my friends slipping away even faster now. Ava was the next one I tried to reach out to, hoping she might have a different perspective, but when I asked if she could meet, she said she was too busy with a tone that made it clear she didn't care to elaborate. Ava and I used to stay up late talking about anything and everything. Now, she sounded like a stranger, a distant echo of the friend I once trusted. By the time the weekend rolled around, I was desperate. Mason was my last hope. If there was anyone left who might listen, it was him. I caught him after work, practically cornering him outside his building. Liam, he said, his voice tense, glancing around like he didn't want to be seen with me. What's going on? I should be asking you that, I replied, unable to keep the frustration out of my voice. Everyone's acting like I don't exist, and Riley's saying things about me that don't make any sense. I feel like I'm going crazy, man. Just tell me what's going on. Mason hesitated looking at me with something close to pity. Look, man, Riley's just got these plans, all right? She's really serious about it, and she thinks you don't fit into them. Maybe you should just let her do her thing. Asterisk let her do her thing, asterisk? I snapped, my voice louder than I intended. She's tearing my life apart, Mason. She's turning my friends against me, and for what? Some plan, she can't even explain? Mason flinched, and I could see a flash of guilt cross his face. It's not personal, Liam. Riley, she thinks you're in the way of what she's trying to build. She's convinced us that it's for the best. Convinced you? My heart sank. Are you seriously telling me that you're just going along with this? He didn't answer, and in his silence, I got my answer. For the next week, I felt like I was floating in some surreal nightmare. Every attempt I made to reach out, to explain myself, was shut down. Jackson, Ava, and Mason started avoiding me entirely. If I called, they wouldn't pick up. If I texted, I got short replies or nothing at all. It was like I had become invisible, a ghost haunting the life I once knew. Even at home, Riley was icy, dropping hints that I should start thinking about my own life path and find my place somewhere that aligns with my goals. Every word from her felt like a blade, slicing through whatever remained of our sibling bond. But the worst part? I still didn't understand why. What was this grand plan that Riley had? 
What kind of future was she envisioning that required my complete isolation? The way she spoke, it was almost cult-like, as though she were a prophet and I was just a doubter in her holy mission. I kept trying to find answers, but Riley was careful. She wouldn't slip, wouldn't say anything that gave me a glimpse into her true motives. And my friends, my former friends, were her disciples, clinging to her every word, as if she'd offered them something I couldn't. One night, after another day of silence and side glances, I decided to take a more drastic approach. If Riley wasn't going to let me in on her plans willingly, I'd find out myself. I waited until she left the house and then went into her room, searching for any hint of what she was hiding. It didn't take long for me to find something strange. In her closet, tucked away behind some old shoeboxes, I found a folder labeled Project Legacy. My hands shook as I opened it, flipping through pages of documents, charts, and notes in Riley's handwriting. There were names, ours, our parents, even Jackson, Ava, and Mason. Every page had details, plans, even roles assigned to each of us, except me. On the last page, in bold letters, were the words, Liam, expendable. Liability to the family's future. I felt my stomach drop. My own sister had labeled me a liability, an expendable part of her project. Whatever this was, whatever she had convinced my friends to believe in, it didn't include me. Worse, it was clear that she saw me as an obstacle, something, or someone, that needed to be removed. In that moment, all my doubts, all the nagging fears I'd been pushing away, came crashing down on me. Riley had done this. She had turned my friends, my life, against me. And I was left with nothing but questions and a painful, chilling realization. My own family was conspiring to erase me from their future. After finding the Project Legacy folder, my entire world flipped. The shock of it, the betrayal, was like a bad dream I couldn't wake up from. My sister, Riley, my own blood, had meticulously crafted a plan to cut me out of the family's future. And it wasn't just her. She'd managed to rope in my friends, the people I thought I could trust more than anyone. Each time I looked at those cold, typed words, Liam, expendable, the anger and hurt gnawed deeper. I couldn't let it go. I needed answers. I had to understand how Riley had pulled this off, what she'd said to Jackson, Ava, and Mason to make them think I was nothing but a dead weight. So I decided to confront her head on, but carefully, without letting her know I'd found her precious folder. I figured I'd drop subtle hints, try to get her to reveal more about her intentions. But Riley wasn't as easily outmaneuvered as I'd hoped. The next evening, after dinner, I waited until she settled into the living room, scrolling on her phone. I sat down across from her, watching her closely. She looked up, raising an eyebrow. What? She asked, her voice flat. I kept my tone casual. I've been thinking a lot about what you said, about finding my own path and all that. But it's weird, Riley. Don't you think it'd be easier to do that if my friends weren't suddenly distant? Her gaze turned calculating, just for a second. But she quickly masked it with a shrug. Maybe they've realized they have goals of their own. Not everything is about you, Liam. I couldn't help but scoff. Oh. I'm sure it's not about me. Just strange, though, that you're the common link. The distance, the weird comments, how they've all started seeing me as well. An inconvenience. Funny how it lines up with your vision. Riley leaned forward, her eyes sharp. So, you think I'm somehow responsible for your lack of direction? Maybe instead of blaming me, you should be asking yourself why you've always been stuck in neutral. People get tired of waiting, Liam. And I'm done waiting for you to catch up. There it was. The harsh, unfiltered truth I'd been dreading. Riley wasn't interested in pulling me up to her level. She saw me as an anchor, dragging her down. Catch up. I repeated, my voice barely above a whisper. Riley, we're family. Isn't there room for both of us? She laughed, cold and dismissive. Family? You're so naive. Family is more than blood. It's about who's willing to put in the effort who's willing to sacrifice to make something meaningful. You're just there. And I need more than that. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So, what? You're pushing me out because I don't fit your perfect little mold? Riley's face softened slightly, but it was a hollow expression. It's not personal, Liam. 
I need people who are going to help this family thrive. People who see the bigger picture. And frankly, I'm not sure you're one of them. Before I could respond, she stood up and walked away, leaving me alone with her words and an overwhelming sense of helplessness. This wasn't just a family squabble. Riley had her own definition of family, one that apparently didn't include me, and she convinced my friends of it too. The days after that conversation were some of the loneliest of my life. Every time I reached out to Jackson, Ava, or Mason, I felt like I was banging my head against a wall. They'd either ignore my calls, or give me some lame excuse about being too busy. It felt surreal, like they'd become entirely different people, puppets under Riley's control. One night, desperate for any shred of the truth, I decided to follow Riley. She'd been acting extra secretive lately, slipping out late at night with no explanation. I needed to know where she was going, who she was meeting, anything that might give me a clearer picture. So I did it. I waited until she left the house, threw on a hoodie, and kept a careful distance as I tailed her down a series of winding streets. She eventually ducked into a dimly lit restaurant on the edge of town. I followed her inside, sitting a few tables away, where I could overhear her conversation with Jackson, Ava, and Mason. Seeing them together without me was bad enough, but what I heard next turned my world upside down. Riley leaned in, speaking quietly but clearly. Liam's still asking questions, still trying to stick his nose where it doesn't belong. We need to stay on track, and that means we all have to be on the same page. No more talking to him, no more pretending. We have to make him see that he's not part of this. Ava nodded, her face stony. Are you sure this is necessary? I mean, he's well, he's family. Riley's expression hardened. He's only family by blood. He doesn't understand the bigger picture, the legacy we're building here. I can't afford to let him drag us down. We're doing this, and you're either with me or against me. Jackson and Mason exchanged uneasy glances, but nodded their agreement. They looked conflicted, but not enough to stand up to her. Ava, however, hesitated a moment longer before finally agreeing. I felt my throat tighten. Legacy? What legacy was worth destroying a sibling relationship over? I wanted to scream, to charge over to them and demand answers, but I knew that would only make things worse. Instead, I slipped out of the restaurant, my mind racing with questions I was no closer to answering. Over the next few days, I found myself obsessing over Riley's words. Legacy and family kept ringing in my ears. I started digging into our family history, hoping for some clue, some explanation. That's when I discovered something that left me reeling. My search led me to an old, obscure document on our family's ancestry, buried deep in a library archive. It turns out that our family wasn't just any family. There was a long, shadowy history tied to a secretive organization that stretched back generations. According to the documents, our family had played a significant role in maintaining control over a powerful network of influential people, a kind of club that had quietly impacted society from the shadows. And Riley, she'd taken it upon herself to revive this so-called legacy. In her eyes, our family's future was bound to this ancient organization, a group that valued loyalty, strength, and absolute commitment to their goals. Anyone who didn't fit the mold, who couldn't be molded to serve the legacy, was seen as expendable. I remembered her words to my friends. We have to make him see that he's not part of this. She wasn't just speaking out of some desire to succeed. She believed in this. She was treating our family like some kind of ancient dynasty where weakness, or even perceived disloyalty, was a threat. When I got home that evening, I couldn't stop shaking. This was the future Riley wanted, and she was willing to tear apart everything, including her own brother, to see it through. For the next few nights, sleep was out of the question. Every time I closed my eyes, all I could see was Riley, sitting with my friends, plotting, scheming. It wasn't just my imagination anymore. I had proof that she was serious about this twisted legacy. But the worst part? Riley had convinced them that I didn't belong, that I was some weak link in the family chain. My friends, who had been by my side for years, had chosen her vision over our friendship, over everything we'd been through. She'd poisoned them against me, and now they were as committed to her legacy as she was. One morning, with my heart pounding, I decided I had to confront her again. 
This time, there'd be no hinting, no trying to get her to slip up. I was going to lay out what I knew and force her to admit it. I waited until she got home from work, cornering her in the kitchen. Riley, I know about the family history. I know about this legacy you're so obsessed with. She didn't flinch. In fact, a slow smile spread across her face. So, you finally figured it out. Took you long enough. I felt a shiver run down my spine. You're willing to destroy everything. For what? Some ancient family tradition that no one even remembers. Riley's smile faded, replaced by a look of cold determination. It's not just a tradition, Liam. It's our family's destiny. You wouldn't understand. You mean you wouldn't let me understand? I shot back. You've been pushing me out, turning my friends against me. Why? Just because I don't see things your way? She crossed her arms, her expression icy. I did what I had to. You were always in the way, holding us back. I need people I can trust, people who are dedicated. And you're not one of them. The weight of her words settled on me, heavy and final. She wasn't going to back down. She wasn't going to let me back in. Riley had made her choice and in her mind, I was already gone. I left her standing there, her cold gaze following me as I walked away. My sister, the person who was supposed to have my back, had declared me the enemy. Riley's words haunted me for days. Every time I thought about our last confrontation, her dismissive expression, the way she looked at me like I was nothing more than an inconvenience, it made my blood boil. I'd never felt this kind of anger before, and it consumed me. I was done sitting back, done letting her manipulate everyone I cared about. If she was going to make me an enemy, then I'd be one. I spent the next few days quietly gathering as much information as I could. I poured over every document, every scrap of our family's twisted history, trying to understand the full picture of this legacy Riley was so obsessed with. The deeper I dug, the more disturbing it became. This wasn't just some family myth. Our ancestors had been involved in secret dealings, alliances, and schemes that span generations. They'd held influence in high places, pulling strings behind the scenes, building connections to a group I could only describe as a shadow society. Riley had been right about one thing. It wasn't a tradition. It was a mission. A twisted one. Passed down like some prized possession. And she'd taken it upon herself to revive it seeing herself as the rightful heir to this so-called legacy. One night, as I was sorting through yet another file, I stumbled across a name I didn't recognize, Grant. The notes hinted that he was a distant relative, someone who had once been involved in the organization but had broken away for reasons unknown. I was intrigued. Here was someone who'd been part of this family mission and had walked away. Maybe he could help me make sense of all this. With a bit of online digging, I found a lead. Grant was living a few towns over, a retired man in his 60s who seemed to have disappeared off the family radar. Without thinking twice, I decided to pay him a visit. The drive was tense. My mind was spinning, a mix of anger and desperation, and by the time I arrived at Grant's modest home, my hands were shaking. I knocked, half expecting him to turn me away. Instead, he opened the door and looked at me with an expression I couldn't read. Liam, right? He asked, his voice gruff but not unkind. I nodded, caught off guard. Yeah, how did you know? Grant gave a small, knowing smile. You look just like your father. I figured you'd come around someday, given your family's history. He invited me in, offering me a seat in his cramped but cozy living room. As I sat down, Grant settled across from me, eyeing me with a strange mixture of pity and caution. So, what brings you here, kid? he asked, though I could tell he already had an idea. I took a deep breath, forcing the words out. My sister, Riley, she's pushing me out. She's obsessed with some family legacy, convinced that I'm an obstacle in her way. She's, she's turned my friends against me, making me feel like I don't belong. I need to know what all of this really means. Grant sighed, nodding slowly. Yeah, that sounds like her. Your sister has ambition. She reminds me a lot of your great-grandfather. Actually, same drive, same ruthlessness. He paused, his face darkening. The family has a reputation, let's say. A secret legacy that not everyone in the family is cut out for. And those who don't fit well, they don't last long. A chill ran through me. 
What do you mean by, don't last long? Grant looked me dead in the eye. Your great-grandfather was a powerful man. He believed in this family legacy. This idea that our bloodline was meant for something greater. Something sinister, even. He built alliances with powerful people, forged connections, and created a network that controlled more than you'd imagine. But anyone who threatened that mission was dealt with, quietly and permanently, I swallowed hard. So, Riley, she's following in his footsteps? Grant nodded. It sounds like it. But Liam, you have to understand. This isn't a game. The people your sister's involved with, they're dangerous. They don't care about family if it gets in the way of their vision. I felt a surge of anger. She's already trying to push me out of her life. She's turned everyone I know against me. She's practically erasing me from the family. What am I supposed to do? Grant's face softened. You have two choices, kid. You either walk away and let her have her little empire, or you fight. But if you fight, you better be ready for a hell of a battle. Riley's not going to let you ruin her plans, and neither are the people backing her. I clenched my fists. Walking away wasn't an option. This was my family too, my life. I wasn't going to let Riley steamroll me just because she thought I didn't fit her grand plan. Then tell me how to fight, I said, my voice firm. Grant sighed, studying me for a long moment. Finally, he nodded. All right, Liam. But once we start, there's no turning back. You'll have to go all in. Grant took me under his wing over the next few days, teaching me everything he knew about the family's secrets, the alliances, the hidden documents, and the people Riley was likely connected to. He gave me strategies, things I could use to break down Riley's grip on my friends and expose her manipulation. He warned me that it wouldn't be easy. Riley was smart, and her ambition had turned her ruthless. Armed with Grant's knowledge, I set my plan into motion. I knew I couldn't confront Riley directly, not yet, but if I could weaken her influence, I might have a chance. My first move was to try to get through to Jackson. He was the most level-headed of the group, the one I'd always been closest to. If I could get him to see reason, maybe he could help me turn Ava and Mason as well. I called Jackson, surprised when he actually answered. I could hear the tension in his voice, the hesitation. Hey, I said, keeping my tone calm. I know you're probably busy, but I really need to talk to you. Just one last time. Jackson sighed. Liam, I don't know if that's a good idea. Riley made it pretty clear. Just hear me out, I interrupted, my voice firmer than I'd intended. I think you owe me that much. There was a pause, then a resigned sigh. Fine. Meet me at the old park. I got there early, the nervous energy in me building as I waited. When Jackson finally showed up, he looked wary, like he was expecting an ambush. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my emotions in check. Jackson, I started. I know Riley has convinced you all that I'm some kind of obstacle, but you've known me for years. You know who I am. I'm not whatever threat she's made me out to be. He shifted uncomfortably. It's not that simple, Liam. Riley, she explained things. She has this vision, this plan for the family. She's passionate, and she knows what she's doing. She made it sound like you. Like you didn't want to be a part of it. She manipulated you, Jackson. She's trying to erase me to solidify her control. This isn't about the family. It's about her need for power. She's made you her pawns, convincing you that she's the only one who cares about the future. Jackson hesitated, his brow furrowing. I could see doubt creeping in, and I pressed harder. Remember all the times we talked about loyalty, about trust? What kind of friend would I be if I didn't try to warn you? Riley's turning you against me because she sees me as a threat to her ambition. That's not family. That's control. Jackson stared at me, his face tense. But she made it sound like you were the one who didn't want to be a part of things, that you were going to drag us down. I shook my head. That's the lie she's spinning to keep you on her side. I'm your friend, Jackson. I've always been there for you. Riley's only using you to get what she wants. For a moment, he looked away, conflicted. Liam, if you're right. If she's really manipulating all of us, what do we even do? I took a deep breath. First, you need to talk to Ava and Mason. Get them to see what's going on. Riley's power only works if she has you under her control. If we all stand together, she can't divide us. 
Jackson nodded slowly, a hint of determination replacing his uncertainty. All right, I'll talk to them, but if this blows up in our faces, it won't, I promised, though part of me wasn't so sure. Over the next few days, Jackson, Ava, and Mason began to distance themselves from Riley, bit by bit. They stopped returning her calls as frequently, made excuses to avoid her planned family meetings. I could see the effect it had on her, the irritation, the cold fury in her eyes every time she saw me. She knew I was up to something, but she didn't know what. And then came the confrontation I knew was inevitable. Riley cornered me one night, her expression livid. You really think you can turn them against me? She hissed, her voice dripping with venom. I met her gaze, unflinching. I'm not turning anyone against you, Riley. I'm just showing them the truth. She laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. You have no idea what you're up against. You're so far out of your league, Liam. I've spent years building this, planning it all. You can't take it from me. I took a step closer, refusing to back down. I don't need to take anything from you, Riley. I just want my life back, my friends, my family. And if you can't handle that, then maybe you're the one who doesn't belong in this legacy you're so obsessed with. For the first time, I saw a flicker of fear in her eyes. She clenched her jaw, then spat. This isn't over, Liam. You don't know who you're dealing with. I watched her storm off, feeling a strange, bittersweet sense of victory. I'd won a battle, but I knew the war was far from over. Riley wasn't done, not by a long shot. The final showdown with Riley was inevitable. She was furious, lashing out in any way she could, but I could see her carefully crafted world beginning to crumble. Jackson, Ava, and Mason had finally seen through her manipulation, and her legacy didn't seem quite as noble to them anymore. One night, Riley confronted me, her face contorted with a mix of rage and desperation. You think you've won, Liam? You're nothing. I built this. I met her gaze, feeling a strange calm. You built a prison for everyone around you. This legacy isn't family. It's control. She stormed away, her threats echoing behind her. But the hold she'd had on all of us was broken. Riley might have won some battles, but in the end, her obsession cost her the very people she tried so hard to bind. For the first time, I walked away free.